Hey everybody, this is Cappy Smack coming to you from Vega Conflict. Vega Security Inactive. And I wanted to uh, do a supply run with y'all so I could talk about strategy. I do PvE strategy. I don't do any PvP really. Eh, once in a while for Civil War. Online. And then I've got my Civil War fleet right here. It's not what I wanted to talk about. I might do a Civil War video and then I might show it. What I wanted to talk about was doing a supply run. The supply run I'm going to do is for cruiser materials and what I need are Apocrypha cruiser parts because I've still got one or two Apocryphas I need to build and or at least one or two that I need to upgrade. Fleet. And you can see when I go take a look at my ships, where is my Apocrypha need to upgrade? It's right there. It's a Mark IV. I want it to be a Mark V. And I still don't have enough Apocryphas to even put an Apocrypha fleet together. But what I'm going to show you is the value of a Xeno ship and why you want them. So I'm going to find me some 40s and I can hit 12 before I need to repair and there is a supply run every couple of hours. And that's my strategy. Find some 40s, kill some 40s until I get like 12. And then I can switch to my other fleet and do 12 more. And that'll give me like 24 in an hour, which is a good number. Target locked. Not going to be able to reach that one. I think I can reach that one. So what I'm using is uh, my uh, Axis Fleet level 79, which is two Guardians and a Punisher, and a Paladin. And I'm going after level 40 Fleet. And you're asking why use such a uh, uh, high-level fleet against such a low-level fleet? Because it's easier. And my goal is to get these Apocrypha parts. I don't need to prove I'm a good player at this point, because I don't care. I'm going shopping for Apocrypha parts. Now I could show you the combat, it really doesn't matter. They're going to die pretty fast. Guardians and the Punisher are going to make quick work of these level 40 ships. Paladins are going to kill a couple, two, three, like it's supposed to. That's like four ships the Paladin has killed all by itself. Well, not all by itself, but hey. What's life with that hyperbole? And that's how quick that is. So I want is the Apocrypha box. That's all I care about. I need 12 of them. I could use both fleets at the same time, but easier to keep track of one fleet, and I don't know what other players might be out. And these fleets really aren't set up for PvP. It's easier to keep track of one fleet at a time, and I don't need the 14 plus hours of repair just to prove I'm a real man because it don't matter whether I'm a real man a fake man or whatever I want these apocrypha parts so let's talk about what it takes to go from being a low level player and what a low level player means in this game low level player in this game means you've got uh, a fleet factory at 9, you've got a ship lab at 9, and you have a fleet bay at 9 or above. That's a low level player. Now let's talk about what it takes to get to that point. Uh, at, to get from level 8 to level 9 is basically 6 days and some change each. So if you had level 8 in all of those and you want to get to level 9, and keep in mind with level 8, your fleet bay is going to support a level 31, maybe a level 32 fleet if you're lucky. 
because of the ship mass? So going all three of those to level 9 is going to take the better part of a month. And I would say strap in and get used to it because that's about how, how long it's going to take. Now if you want to spend 400 and some odd coins, 432 coins per day to speed that up, you certainly can. And I know Kixai would appreciate that. They're not going to tell you that, but they would appreciate you doing that. You don't have to. You can just sit back and do something else while those things upgrade. I'm doing that now in my free-to-play account where I have spent no coins at all. It's currently upgrading the, uh, the ship factory from level 8 to level 9. And I still got, well, two days and seven hours to go. And I'm not spending any coins there. I never have. So once you're a low-level player trying to break into the big leagues, trying to get your first Xeno ship, what you're going to want to do is put together a level 40 plus fleet. At least got to be level 40. Don't try it with anything smaller. Or you're likely not going to make it, or you're going to spend a lot more coins than you're going to want to. Target locked. So what you're going to want to do is put together a level 40, level 45 fleet, the biggest fleet you can in your fleet, in your fleet bay uh, 9. I would suggest doing that with Apocryphus because you can easily get those from a planet strike. It's one of the first ships you should get in a planet strike. So build your stuff up to level 9. So build some Apocryphus. Try to get uh, the Nova Ray, because it's a good gun at level 1. It does good damage, it's got good range. And keep in mind, building those Apocrypha is probably going to take, uh, I don't know, 4 days each? 3 days each? I don't know. I don't really have a guide on that. But getting 6 of them is going to take took you 24 days to 24, 25, 26 days to get your level 8 modules up to level 9. Again, you're going to have to strap in for another 2 or 3 weeks to get your Apocryphas. Meanwhile, you've done all your planet strikes and you've got all of those blueprints. And during that uh, 8 weeks, whatever it is, you can be doing things like farming out all of the blueprints that you're going to get from your planet strikes because that's when they spawn a lot of them because you're going to have to get that Nova Ray somewhere and that's where you're going to get it or you're going to get lucky and it's going to appear as a either planet strike or sector strike reward now the way to slice it, you're going to have to work up to it, but the easiest way to get into uh, the Xenotech, or Axis Tech, at this point, is by doing a Sector Strike with a suitably, you know, fitted fleet. That's going to take you a long time to get there. But once you're there, and you can break in your first, I would say, skip over the Punishers and go straight for a Guardian. I think the Guardians are going for, I don't know how many points they go for these days, I think it's like uh, one and a half or one, 1.75 million points. So after you got your pocket fleet for a sector strike, you're going to start hitting level 35s. That's your sweet spot. Try to have a fleet at least 10 levels above the thing you're trying to hit, and it's a much better, much better time lower cost because you're going to spend coins. Assuming you want to break into the next the next tech above where you are, it's going to cost you something. So, I don't know if you like Kixai, if you hate Kixai, it doesn't really matter. This is their game. You want to play their game. It's going to be a whole lot more efficient just to bite the bullet and pay the money. Just like you do when you're paying rent. Or just like you do when you buy food go to the food store, you can cry about the evil corporation that's there to take your money, 
But that's not going to get you food. If you want food and you go to you get to go to a food store, you're going to pay the evil corporation whatever the hell they want to walk away with a loaf of bread. I'd say get over it, stop crying about it, and just do it. So you buy yourself some coins, and if you're smart, like I did, you choose to pay those coins for what Kickstarter is going to cost. Uh, is going to say is DLC, and the DLC that you might be looking for is some pre-built Punishers. If you get lucky and you find those like I did, you jump all over them. It's going, to, it's going to save some time. The time I save by spending $600 in this game is, I kid you not, a minimum of 54 days. That is the time I save myself. Minimum, 54 days. What does it turn out to be? A cost per day kind of a thing? I don't know. It's like $10 a day for 54 days. Now you can either not spend the $600 on the DLC and not get the pre-built Punishers and spend the 54 days to do it slowly or you trade money for time and you get there a little faster. But that's what it's going to take. Now after you get your first Punisher blueprint it's going to, it's going to take at least 9 days to build it and fit it. That's what you should be planning on. Again, strap in and get used to it because that's what it's going to take. Seven to nine days for a Punisher. Nine to eleven days for a Guardian. You can cry about it, you can bitch and moan, you can say kicks eyes evil. None of that's going to change the amount of build time you're going to have to do to make that thing happen. That's just life. You don't do any good to cry about it and bitch about it and moan about it because none of that does anything but frustrates you. If you want to defeat yourself, find a way to cry, bitch, and moan, because that will defeat your ability to stay focused long enough to achieve a goal. I would suggest you figure out how best to maximize what you have in terms of time or money, and do it in such a way that you can have a smile on your face, because at least then you're not working against yourself. You're not going to work against Kixai. Evil corporations are going to exist in perpetuity because that's what a corporation does. It exists in perpetuity. If you've ever formed a corporation, you would know that. It's a legal entity that exists forever until it is disposed. And no matter what you say, or how much you cry, or how much you stamp your feet, or how much you want to hold your breath, you are not going to force Kixai to dispose of their corporation. It will not happen. So if you want to play this game, get used to how much time it's going to take. So your first Punisher comes off, you put it in with your nice shiny Apocrypha fleet, and now you've got a little more power than you had before. But you're going to do that five more times. And it's going to take you seven to nine days each time. So your minimum build for a fleet of five Punishers is 35 days minimum probably more like 45 days but while you're doing that you can be using your Punishers as they come off the assembly line one at a time you can be using them to farm out sector strikes because until you've got a fleet of at least five punishers you should not be going into an axis event because you are going to lose your shit you're either going to spend more build time than you want or repair time than you want or you're going to spend more coins than you want and you can always spend coins to speed up your repair time but I'm going to tell you, strategy-wise, your sweet spot is where you're going to get the greatest reward for the least cost. Greatest reward, least cost. The greatest reward until you've got at least five Punishers with Xeno weapons is going to be Sector Strike. And you're going to be doing that for two months. 
before you ever get to your first Axis event. You're going to be farming out your Sector Strikes because that's your sweet spot. After you've got at least five Punishers, then you can start thinking about going after, you know, your first, uh, your first big Axis event. You can start setting your sights on that Paladin. Could you do it before? Sure, pay more money. I know Kickside would appreciate it. They want you doing the thing that's going to make you frustrated because they're going to take your money and and they're going to pacify your frustration. That's their business model. You can defeat their business model if you find a sweet spot. They're still going to give them money. It's their game. They built it. They know why they built it. They want your money. It's like the people who own that food store down the street. They built that food store because they want your money. And they know you're going to get hungry. And they know you're going to go looking for food. And when you do, you're going to go looking for their store because they've got food to sell you. Now you can find your sweet spot or whatever it takes you just to stay alive and buy, no buy that and nothing more. And you can mitigate their business plans to take all of your money. And I would say to you, the smarter thing to do is figure out the least amount of money you need to spend to do what you need to do. That's Capitalism 101 as a consumer. So that's what it takes to go from being a low-level player with a level 9 fleet factory, a level 9 ship lab, and a level 9 fleet bay into having either Xenotech or Axis Tech. Now getting your first Xeno or Axis ship might be a lot more points than you can get. It might blow your budget to have to spend that much money on coins. You might not be able to find a suitable DLC pack that's got pre-built Punishers. You might just have to go through the, the Punisher route build up some Punishers before you can get your Guardians or your Paladin. I mean, in my experience getting the getting the the, uh, the Paladin the first time around in the very first Axis event, and I, I did get DLC packs, and I did have pre-built Punishers, but I still had to fit them. That, like two to three days each. What I spent in my first uh, Axis event, you can see online. It's in a video. I was all set to spend $150, and I spent a little less than that. I spent like 90 On coins. Because at that point, I was not uh, working on my sweet spot. I had no idea what that might be. And I was just spending coins. Rather stupidly. And that cost like $90 to get my first Paladin. Well worth it, by the way, because it is a very good ship. Power to weapons. So I'm just going to keep doing this until I get like 12 of these things. I got 9, I need 3 more. 12 was like a sweet spot. Once I send my fleet back for repair, you'll see why. I'm trying to keep the repair time under two hours, because the next event coming up, if I wanted to do the next event, is uh, a cutter strong box in two hours and 41 minutes. So my repair time's got to be uh, two hours, thereabouts, or under, or I wouldn't be able to turn these fleets around for the next supply run. So if I'm doing supply runs and there's no other events going on, this is what I'm doing. Because, you know, by the time my first fleet gets repaired, it's ready to go on that next supply run. My next fleet will be around two hours worth of repair. It'll be ready to go shortly thereafter. The first fleet's going to be busy for eh, 20, 30 minutes. And then I can put in for a repair, get it ready for the next supply run. Meanwhile, my second fleet is ready to go. So let's get back to talking about uh, 
the value of Axis Tech versus Xenotech. People like to cry sometimes about the, the repair time and the build time. All right, the difference in build time for a Guardian versus a Punisher is an extra two days. 11 days and some change for Guardian using Axis Technology. Nine days for a Punisher using Xenotech. So it's an extra two days of, of build time on a non-pre-built ship. So what's the difference in, in value? What's the difference in strength? Well, my tests have shown that Axis Tech is at least 25 to 50 percent better than Xenotech. But let's say it's 25 percent. 25 percent better ship at a two-day extra repair time or build time is uh, all right. So what's two days out of nine, right? That's well. That's a one-fourth longer build time. I get a one-fourth better ship, 25% better ship for 25% longer build time. I call that a good value. That's, that's one for one. And what the tests I've done on my Axis fleet with just two Guardians and a Paladin, it's as effective as four Guardian, or four, uh, four Punishers and a Dominion carrier. Those two fleets are on par. One's a level 75, once I take that Punisher out, and the other one, is a level 73 and they're on par so I need one more and then I can send this fleet back and start it turning around because this is my strategy I could probably do 16 before I turn it around but let's just see we're gonna do 12 and then I'm gonna send it back yeah, I'm having to search around for a level 40. Because they haven't really spawned yet. So my independent tests have shown that uh, Axis is about 25% better and it takes 25% longer. And the repair time if you screw up is a lot longer than 25%. But that's the risk. The reward when you do it correctly and you don't screw up the reward is you get to farm the hell out of whatever the hell you want to farm that's the reward Our if I were doing this with something other than Axis Tech or Xenotech I wouldn't get 12 to 16 before I have to stop if I wanted to do the next event I'd probably get I don't know 4 or 5 Now, do you have to play with Axis Tech and Xenotech? No, you do not. You do not have to play with big ships. You can play with small ships. Small ships in this game can still be effective. I didn't have to spend the $600 to get my first set of Punishers. And I didn't have to wait 54 days to get to get a fleet of five Punishers. I could have focused on everything smaller than that. I've probably done quite well. But you can still do Axis events and alien decimations and alien mobilizations with something other than Xenotech. But, you know, Xeno ships, like a Punisher, has alien resist, which means your cost is going to be lower if you choose to use coins, or your repair time is going to be lower if you choose not to use coins. But I'm here to tell you when you don't use coins, you're going to get one-third the number of points as if you were to use coins. That's life. Deal with it. Hold it full, sir. Activate, sir. Hold it full, sir. Activate.
So now we're going to send this fleet back and we're going to take a look at the repair time and I want uh, two hours or under to maximize my rewards relative to the cost. Which means I can go off and do something else for two hours after I'm done doing this. But I, I wouldn't be doing anything otherwise anyway. I'm doing supply runs when there's not an event going on because I'm looking for parts so I can upgrade my ships. That's what you do. So I've just spent uh, 25 minutes so far to get 12 boxes. We're going to take a look at the repair time. Copy, sir. Fleet. And it's two hours and two minutes. You subtract five minutes because you get that for free. And now I'm done with this fleet. I'm at two hours and two minutes. Twelve boxes is it. This fleet is done. I'm going to put this guy in for a repair five minutes before uh, the next thing comes up. And How much time do I have to spend until my next event? Uh, I've got uh, two hours and 33 minutes. So my repair time really needs to be, you know, If I put it in for repair right now, I can actually go out and get more boxes with this fleet. Until I can balance it around two and a quarter hours. So maybe four more. Well, let's try that. Let's try getting a couple more because I haven't quite spent 30 minutes on this yet. And really it's whatever I can do in 30 minutes per fleet because it's a one hour event. So yeah, this is going to be kind of a long video, but I wanted to show you my strategy. Show you how the sweet spot thing works. So I've got 12 apocrypha boxes right now on this one fleet. Now let's just take a look at the amount of damage I've taken so far. We're at 92%. So around 90% uh, might be the break even. I've got uh, a little over, well, a little over two and a half hours to the next event. which is going to be cutters in 2 hours and 32 minutes. That's how much repair time I've got. I was at uh, 2 hours and 2 minutes. We're going to hit 2 more and then check the repair time again. I actually need some resources and, you know, I should be collecting them, but really not a big deal right now. I mean, yeah, I can send my hauler fleet out, pick up resources, meanwhile this kill is happening. Then I can pick up resources, because level 40 resources are not bad. Here comes my hauler fleet, level 44. Set up for hauling. Venom battleships, level 5 cargo bays, and weapons. Mainly Nova Rays. And he'll park and wait for the resources. Coming up on half an hour, so I'm going to uh, put this first fleet in for a repair. And we'll compare the repair time of an Axis fleet with one Punisher versus four Punishers. And he didn't have to pick anything up. Return course laid in. 
Now it's 5.9 million resources, which divided by three is just under two million for each of the three resources. So you'll watch my mineral count go up from 522 million to around 524 million. Maybe just a little shy of 524 million. Return vector locked in. Your orders. RTV, copy that. We're going to take a look at repair time and switch over to the other fleet. This is probably going to be an hour video because it's an hour event. And at no time am I getting the least bit frustrated because I know what everything is going in. I've talked about the evils of Kick's Eye, but I really don't care. They're here to make money. Everybody is. Deal with it. Get over it. Move on. Two hours and 21 minutes. Not bad. That'll be ready to go for the next event. Let's so now I bring this fleet out and rinse, wash, and repeat. I've got less than two hours and 30 minutes worth of repair that I can do, so I have to watch this one a little bit. As soon as he gets around two hours and two minutes with 12 boxes, that's where the sweet spot is. If I go over that, then I am being stupid. If my plan was to use both fleets for the next event, but I already know what the sweet spot is. I have tested it in the past. I am perfectly happy with it. Don't have to spend any money on these little events. Because I already invested $600 in the game to get what I needed in this fleet. Three Punishers and a Dominion Carrier came to me in two DLC packs. And I built the fourth Punisher. I had the blueprint. And I wanted to be 54 days ahead rather than wait 54 days and go yawn, yawn, yawn. So I bit the bullet and spent the money. I'm at VIP level 6 whenever they get around to showing that feature before they had to disable it because there was a bug. I was at VIP level 6, so I haven't spent an incredible amount of money. So now when my box count gets up to 36, I can send this fleet back. The Axis fleet did 12 before it had to be repaired for 2 hours and 2 minutes. And we'll check this one. So if you have the patience and you don't lose your ship because things are going to take some time, and you're okay with living in a capitalist society where evil corporations want to take your money, then you simply figure out what you want to spend and whether or not you can and whether or not, whether or not you want to play the game or whatever it takes. It takes money to be in an apartment and live, it takes money to eat food, it takes money to have a car. If you've done your homework and you've built up a skill that people want, Attacking, sir. and you're able to present yourself, 
in order to talk people into hiring you, then you'll have more money than you'll ever spend on this or any other game. I think 625 coins to get a million points during one of these events, four day events, is not bad. It's about what I would pay to go to a movie. It's about as entertaining as watching a movie when I already know what the ending is going to be because people have already, you know, spoiled the movie or have seen the trailers or whatever the case may be. I already know how the movie is going to end. Good guy wins. Movie over. Roll credits. That's what my tests tell me. 625 coins per million points. Which is not bad. But this is why we do it. We do it because what we want is the ability to farm the hell out of these lower level ships using higher level ships because that's a sweet spot. And I can build up as many apocryphas as I want. I'm going to spend an hour to get uh, 24, 26 boxes. And, you know, life is going to go on. So why do I want, you know, Mark V Apocryphas? Now that I have uh, Axis ships and I can build Guardians, why do I even care about the lower level ships? Well, why not? doesn't really take any real time to get what I want in terms of playtime. I'm going to have enough Apocrypha parts to do a couple, maybe two, possibly three Mark V Apocryphas, probably, depends. It's all, it's all RN Jesus, random number generator, going to give me what I want. Random number Jesus. Gonna make it possible. Moving if the numbers out. smile at me and the random number generator seated just right. Because after you've got higher level ships, getting the lower level stuff becomes easier, so why not? Am I gonna use the Apocryphus? Yeah, I might might be some entertainment at some point. Do I need them? Ready to go. Don't really need them. Ready. I can build better ships. I'm just here showing you why you want Axis Tech or Xenotech. Because it makes getting lower level ship parts easier. Now you can go the other way and struggle. You can go the other way and be frustrated. You can go the other way and curse the hell out of Kixai. Retrieving cargo. And none of the cursing you might do if Kixai is ever going to change what it takes to get what you want in the game. Cursing and swearing at my landlord is not going to lower my rent price. Probably raise it. If they find out I've been cursing and swearing at them. Attacking, sir. That's also, by the way, why if you're the President of the United States, you don't want to piss off members of Congress. You can piss them off if you wish to, but if you do that, you're going to make getting your agenda accomplished that much more difficult, and therefore it is, it is self-defeating. So, you know, now we've learned that Trump is basically stupid. If he had made nice with all the members of Congress and invite them over his home and wind them and dined them and not try to get them to pledge loyalty, he'd be farther ahead.
So you're not going to hear me say bad things about Kickside because it don't matter. Yes, they're an evil corporation. Yes, they want your money. Yes, they designed this game to take your money. But everybody else in the United States of America and everywhere else in the world is going to build up the ability to take your money. Get the fuck over it. Stop whining and crying about it. And just deal with doing what you want to do. And I probably like this game because the first time I tried to play it there were so many players and everybody was into rolling over my base that I couldn't get anything accomplished because I didn't have any resources because everybody was farming the hell out of my base. And I didn't really know what I was doing with base layout. Didn't really know what I was doing and the game really was far less balanced then than it would ever be now. At least now you can build up a base and if you do it right you can keep people out of your base. Because what they have to do to roll over it is going to be more difficult now than what it was then. So that's probably why I like the game now, it's because I couldn't play it then. Attacking target. And I'm coming up on my limit on this fleet. I think I've got six more I can do. So, meanwhile, my first fleet is being repaired. It's got 2 hours and 11 minutes to go, and there's less than 2 hours and 11 minutes before the next event. You can check that here. Next event, cutter, 2 hours and 18 minutes. So, that will be done 7 minutes before, and plus the 5 minutes I get for free, it'll be done a quarter of an hour before the next event. And meanwhile, I'm picking up resources from some of these. I'm up to 527 million minerals. Everything else is maxed out. It throws away the helium-3 and it throws away the antimatter. It throws away two-thirds of what I haul back. I guess I could cry about that, but it's not going to change anything. Oh, evil Kixai. They're so evil. Look, they, 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 they make me waste resources. Oh, wah, wah, wah. But none of that changes anything. So crying about it don't help. You can cry about it if you want to. You can kick your feet, you can stammer, you can hold your breath. It don't matter. Loud and clear. Loading cargo. No more cargo. Attacking plotting course. Yes, sir. Engaging target. I cannot reach that one no matter what I do. I guess I could cry about that too if I wanted to, but it's not going to change anything. And you still need to find a level 40 I can actually hit. We need orders. New heading. Oh we man, look Kick's eye. They made this game, they made they made it to a certain enemy fleets you can't even reach. Look at that, it's so unfair. Now did me saying that change anything? No. Did I waste some breath? Yes. Did I frustrate myself a little bit? Well, I might have if I were serious, but I'm just carrying it on because it's ridiculous when people carry on in a video and they cry and bitch and moan, Oh, I'm done with this game. I'm done with this game. Look, I'm done with this game. Look at this. Oh, look, it's so unfair. And, uh, or the, the, look at this Axis tech. It's, it, look, look how much more powerful it is. And, and look, dude, just do what you have to do to get the Axis tech and then you'll have powerful ships. Stop crying. Yes, more powerful ships in the future are going to take longer to build. Guess what? That's life. Deal with it. I'm patiently waiting while this ship finishes the kill, because getting frustrated ain't going to make it go any faster. The thing that would make it seem faster is if I were to set an alarm and go do something else. If you set an alarm and go do something else, the repair time don't matter. If you set an alarm and go do something else, then the build time don't matter. It's like that six-day build time on my other account. 99% of the time, I don't give a shit about it. And 99% of the time, that build time don't matter. I check it once a day. 
Every time I check it, it's less than the time before. Engaging target. Ready to go. New vector. Sir. Loud and return course laid in. Ready. Time to send that ship back with resources, two thirds of which are going to be thrown away. Now, at least Kicksize is coming out with that VIP system. Other free-to-play games do have VIP systems, not all do, but some do. Where the more you pay, the better your perks get. It's at least something. They wouldn't have to do that, but they're doing it. They're being nice. They're giving back to the community. They're not giving a lot back. They're giving something. There are other free-to-play games that are, will just take your money and they don't give a shit. There's one in particular I started playing because I thought it would be cute and neat and turned out to be one of the worst games out there. And of course the game I'm talking about is Skyforge. Skyforge had an event where they had a reward for the event where the reward was so hideously overpowered that people were spending a lot of fucking money just to get it because it was hideously overpowered and what do they do? They nerf the shit out of it without so much as a how do you do? They just nerf the shit right out of it. Ready to go. Reporting. Planetary orbit. So if you wanted to be upset about something, I guess you could be upset about that. I really didn't care because I really didn't do anything about that event. In fact, most of the events I don't do anything with, most of the time I'm saving up resources so in case they do come out with an event that means anything and they probably never will, at least I'll have what I would need so I can whiz through the event and get whatever the thing at the end of the rainbow might be right before they nerf it. Did I pay money for that game? Yeah, I did. Did I make some videos? Yeah, I did. Am I playing it anymore? Not really. Am I likely to spend any more money in the game? No. Is it an evil corporation? Always. But that's not why I stopped playing. I'm not saying I'll always play this game. But for now, it's reasonable entertainment for a reasonable period of time. And let's face it, I'm doing this because it pisses off my girlfriend who really isn't so much my girlfriend anymore because she basically dumped me. Wants to get rid of the stuff that I left at her place and then she can't figure out why I think it's over. But I'm moving to Denver so it really don't matter. Now I am going to go hang out with her for a couple of weeks. In Austin. For old time's sake. But is the relationship still alive? Not really. Do I actually care about it? Not really. Is she aware of that? Not really. Engaging target. Ready for orders. Does it matter? Not really. Yes, Was that relationship ever going anywhere? Not really. She's never really seen the value of treating me what I would consider to be right. She's always seen a huge amount of value in criticizing everything I do. And, you know, that's basically what women like to do sometimes, criticize the hell out of their men. And then when their men aren't interested in, in, you know, spending all their time with them anymore, they very often don't know why. I was listening to some gal when I was living in California talking about a boyfriend who would not make a commitment, and she said, I just don't know why he won't make a commitment to me. If you were to look at that relationship more closely, and I really didn't care at the time. I was within earshot and she was saying it, so I heard it. But if you were to look at that relationship more closely, it's very likely she's doing things the dude just doesn't like. And he's not making a commitment because 
why the fuck do you make a commitment to a woman who's not treating you in a reasonable way? Why do it? There's no reason. And I think at the end of the day, men are going to do things based on reasons. If a man don't see a reason to do something, he's likely not to do it. So I've got two more of these, one more after this one. We're at 50 minutes into this event. I've used two fleets. I'm walking away with a reasonable number of Apocrypha boxes, because what I want to do is upgrade my Apocryphas. Chicago Fault, sir. Got three Mark Vs, I want to have at least one or two more, maybe three. Engaging this isn't the only event that I would do like this. This is just an example of what I do during an event where I'm doing a supply run for an hour with two hideously overpowered fleets based on what I'm asking them to do. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my sweet spot. Once you figure that out about this game, the rest just falls into place. Figure out how you can how you can leverage a much more powerful fleet to take on a much less powerful enemy. Find your sweet spot, figure out whether or not you want to pay coins, figure out what your value is in spending those coins. It's like right now if I wanted to buy coins, it's so stupid to do right now, it's not even worth it because they're not offering me any perks. They offer me crafting materials. I might spend money on coins. They offer me something along, you know, some, something in addition to those coins. I might spend you coins. Spend anymore, There's no reason to spend money on coins when there is no additional oh, perk mate, for sir. doing it. Loud and clear. Collecting cargo. Plot course for yeah, I'm not going to have time to pick that one up. Ready for orders. So now I've gotten in uh, 24 Apocrypha boxes, thereabouts. We're going to see what the repair time is. Yep, it blew up. Alright, let's take a look at the repair time. One hour and 30 minutes. Gee, I could still use this fleet for a while if I wanted to. Because I've got more than an hour and 30 minutes until the next event. So the cutter event coming up in two hours and six minutes. Ready. So I can actually go out and do some more hunting. I've got another seven minutes. And once you know it, someone's trying to call me on the phone while I'm doing a video. Well, maybe I'll answer the phone call. Well, that phone call was a nothing burger. Some dude calling up because he wanted a contractor to go to New York or New Jersey or some silly thing. In theory, I've got a job. Until they tell me otherwise. Where, by the way, I would get to... Uh, you know, a whopping $58 an hour. Which on a 40-hour week is not bad. Minus taxes, still not bad. 
it's reasonable money for working remote where I don't have to go into an office. Just have to pee into a cup and prove that I'm not a criminal and if they decide to smile on me and keep me working, it's it's not bad money. Moving out. Ready to go. Moving out. Ready. But that's because I'm a Proceeding software engineer with four course. decades of experience. Orders. Plotting course. Reporting. Not the most amount of money I'd ever made. We need orders. New heading. Yes, sir. The most I've ever been paid is $100 an hour. It's not the least amount either. The least amount I've ever been paid is a lot less than $25 an hour. But I've been doing that for four decades. That's 40 years. Orders? Awaiting orders. I've only been playing this game for maybe four months, five months. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm really not unhappy to pay for what I get in life. I figure out whether or not I want to pay the money and whether or not there's any value in it before I spend it, and then I don't cry about it. <clears throat> Oh, we're coming down to the end of the event. There's only three minutes left. This might be my last kill. Might get a, one more. I might be able to squeeze just one more in. Actually, actually, this fleet took a bit less damage than the Axis fleet. Loud and clear. But I'm saying they're pretty much on par. I think I might try one more. I might not get the box for it. But when the time runs out, you don't get the rewards. Again, that's the way the game works. You can cry about it if you want to. Engaging target. We need orders. Plotting course. Oh, that evil kicks out. Look at that. I've got this bug in the game. I, I run out of time and they don't get the reward. Where? Well, It is what it is. Figure it out and deal with it. I'm going to try to get it just to see. Chances are I will not get the box for this kill. And I could cry about it and I could stammer and I could, you know, call kicks eye names. It's not going to change anything. I could march in the streets. It's still not going to change a damn thing. Let's see if I get the box. Do I get the box? Can I kill it in less than a minute and a half? Let's find out. Target destination reached. I don't know. Ready for orders. Moving out. It might work, it might not. Yes, sir. Either way, this is my last kill. Because the event is coming to a close. Along with this video. Which is an hour video. Sorry about that, guys. You're having to slog through an hour to see what my strategy is for a supply run. And I've never done one of these videos before. I may have before, but don't think I have. And I had some things to say. And I'm doing this before I go spend some money on another evil corporation to buy lunch. That's life in America. At least we have a place we can go to buy lunch. There's some people in the world don't even have that. Hey, I got the box. Because the event hasn't ended yet. Back to base, sir. Orders? Retrieving cargo. So there was no reason to cry about the evils of Kixai. 
I'm not saying I love Kick's Eye. I'm not saying I hate him. I'm just saying it don't matter. One way or the other. If I can love him or hate him, it's not going to change anything about this game. I could love or hate Burger King, and it's not going to change anything about the cost of my lunch. Or whether or not I have to buy it. Or whether or not I have to do that every single fucking day. On the other hand, at least I get to be alive. Another day. So, let's see what we got. What we got is... One hour and 56 minutes of repair, and I can turn this one around in an hour and 56 minutes. And the next vent is an hour and 59. And this guy will be done in an hour and 51. So, while I'm working on the next event, if I were going to do it, the second fleet would be 30 minutes worth of repair left, which means I wouldn't be able to use it on that second event. But that's life. Your directive, sir. But that got me some boxes, and that's what I was after. So let's take a look at what I got. What I got is Apocrypha boxes. These others came from other events. I can just uh, open them all. And it gave me some decimator cutter parts. What I got is uh, two Apocrypha 2. Mark II patterns. Five Mark III's. I got no Mark V's, but that's life. I got some antimatter. It opened up a couple other boxes and wasted some of those. So that's what I got. What I'm trying to build is Apocrypha upgrades. Let's just take a look. Unclick all these I don't need. I can't do any Apocrypha 5, so I got nothing for my effort on that one. I'd have to do another supply run at some point and try that again, try to get some Apocrypha 5 patterns. Didn't get any. I've got other patterns I don't really need. I guess I could cry about it, but it's not going to change anything. So, here's where my base is. What I currently got going on is I'm upgrading the module to level 9. It's a co combat module, turret. I am equipping some stuff to a turret module. I am researching AM Warheads 5. I am researching a Guardian Cruiser Mark II. I just finished researching a uh, Punisher Mark II. I'm not at the point of being able to actually upgrade my uh, Punisher Mark II because I have to build, I have to craft the Punisher Mark II upgrade credit which I'm working on now. Thankfully it takes less than, a, it takes about a day to do a Mark II Punisher upgrade credit. So that's not bad. I'm also constructing or refitting a Taipan Cutter Mark IV. I am also researching an upgrade for disintegrator cannon turrets. I think it's Mark II to Mark III or some such fucking thing. So that's what I'm doing. Doing all of that. Meanwhile, I'm doing a video about the wasted time I could have spent pissing and moaning about a corporation where I don't own any stock and they don't listen to me and they don't really care and uh, I'm just having fun in the game so that's it on the video you got to see my rewards, you got to see my strategy, you got to see me use two fleets you got to hear me talk about what it takes to get to the point of having those two fleets and keep in mind getting the one fleet would take 54 days, getting the second fleet going to take you know 16 days for the paladin 11 days each for the two guardians that's uh, 16 and 22. That's 28 days. And then the Punisher build would have taken another 9. That's uh, 31 days on top of the 54 or so for the other fleet. 45 days, 54. That's a good uh, two and a half months. So that's what it takes. 
And when you get there, you can go shopping for parts every couple of hours. I've already done all the cutters. I don't need cutter parts. But that's it for the video. Hey, do me a favor and uh, subscribe to the channel because I could use more subscribers. I'm trying to grow it. Hopefully this video is of some value to you. And uh, hey, like the video. If I get some likes, hey, that's cool, man. I'd be liking it. You'd be liking it. Everybody would be liking it. We might even change the world to make it a better place. Again, it's not going to happen, but I could use your help and your support and your likes. And I do have a Patreon page. I know it's a little silly for me to ask people to support a Patreon page when I've only got like 70 some odd subscribers, but I appreciate all of my subscribers, and if I get some people doing the Patreon thing, I might come up with a reason for you to do it. You never can tell. So until the next video, I'll be busy moving in a couple of days. I have to go out today and get some stuff, spend some money on some evil corporations to get some stuff so I can move. But that's life. You gotta do what you gotta do. Crying about it's not gonna help. And we'll catch you next time. In the meantime, have fun.